What is up everyone and welcome to the video. Oh, great spring day out here. It's windy. It's in like the low 60s. Just a beautiful day out here. Wanted to get out and do a hunt. I've been pretty busy lately. It's on a weekend right now and I have some free time. And I uh, did some mapping out of some public areas that are a little over an hour away from where I live. But uh, since it's on a weekend, before I hit the public ground, I did a few knocks first because I'd like to get into a really good spot today. So um, I did a little bit of scouting. I knocked on two different doors of some awesome looking properties. Nobody was home at those. My third knock after doing about a half mile doing some networking in an old area here and I got me an awesome old permission. So today we're going to be metal detecting around a brick house that was built in 1925. Now it may not sound too amazing but Location, location, location on this one. It's like smack dab in the middle of a really old downtown area of a place that goes back to the 1800s. And it's quite spacious and surprisingly not developed over more as a corner lot. So this could be a really good spot to find some old coins and relics. I'm really looking forward to it. So I got to park somewhere else or maybe even walk the whole way back up there. Uh, not a whole lot of parking in this area and their driveway is pretty congested. They didn't want me to park there. So... I'm going to figure out where I'm going to park, we're going to get the metal detector out, and I think we're going to find some good stuff today. So, I'll see you guys in a bit. And oh, on a side note, this orange shirt right here, this is my door knocking shirt. This is the one I use 100% of the time now. Uh, I kind of retired the uh, tie-dye hoodie, um, obviously not good for summer, and it was a little bit over the top. I didn't want to seem too quirky, but um, this, this bright orange shirt, it tells people that you're outgoing. Uh, I think they're more susceptible to... Um, knowing that you're not up to no good when you knock on their door when you're wearing brighter colors. And it's like a it's like a real thin long sleeve, so it kind of works in the winter and in the summer. And it's my door knocking shirt. I think it's the best one. So I obviously don't wear my shades when I'm door knocking. It's just really bright right now. But I have my normal reading glasses on when I knock on the door in this shirt. And it shows people that I'm, that I'm friendly and I strike up a conversation and got the permission today. I'm one for one. So I'll see you at the first hole. Stand okay, by. Okay guys, I am swinging here. I've been swinging only for about a minute and a half. My first target out by the curb, uh, by the old intersection here. First signal about eight inches deep. It was a big chunk of lead, which is actually a pretty good sign. But anyway, I got my first coin tone here by the base of an old tree. And it's a really solid signal. between the 80s and 90s. So just in case the first uh, really good target's a silver coin, I'm gonna try it live. It is showing a few inches of depth too, maybe four inches or so. So we're gonna try it. Hopefully there's not too many roots here. Actually, I hit a really big one. I don't know if this is going to work one-handed. Yeah, these roots are massive. I'm going to get the plug cut and then we'll, uh, I'll pop it and then we'll do it live from there. Okay, all I did is really just cut that flap a little bit more and pop it. You can see that's only not even an inch worth of a flap there. Gigantic root right here. But you can hear the signal's right off to the edge of it, so should be able to pop this live. They may even have it in that scoop. I got down under there pretty good. Nope. Yeah, it's tucked right down in there. Try to come in behind it. Don't want to scratch something good, but under roots like this, sometimes you can't help it. Yeah, you know, the stuff just gets scratched. some roots down in there, smaller ones. Seems like it's right down underneath those. I'm gonna try to cut them on the side. Then maybe I can get down under them. Because they're not very big roots. Just a bunch of small ones. All right. Okay, we're almost touching it now. Oh, 
I think I see it here. Uh, oh boy, not silver, it looks like a clad dime. 1970 something, I can't read the last digit, I think 77. All right, well that's uh, not as old as I expected uh, being down under that root, but hey, we're on the board with a coin. Let's see what comes out next. Okay, here's one that has even more potential than the last signal. Now, I'm gonna do this one semi-live. I'm gonna cut the plug and then we'll do it live from there if I can read it with the pinpointer. It's a little bit faint, but it's deeper and you can see it's ringing in the 90s. Nice, concise signal. Showing, it's gotta be at least five inches down. I like that signal. Ringing in one very specific area too, about right here. So I'm gonna cut the camera, cut this plug, and when I can read it with a pinpointer, we'll turn her back on. Okay, it took me a long time to get this out. It was about 10 inches deep. And it's a big chunk of old lead, oxidized, very white. So that's probably older than this house is. So the fact that I'm finding this old lead like this, I really like that. It's only a matter of time till we hit something good. But uh, yeah, really deep on that one. Under the base of this massive tree yet, uh, working around the side down in the mud here. Got a solid coin tone and I got a 1978 dime like two inches down. So it's a good sign that there's some clad coins here. Hopefully this place hasn't been metal detected before. Now the current uh, people that live here have only lived there for about a year or so. Have no idea if anybody else has been here. Um, but yeah, we're on the board with two coins and it's only been a few minutes. So uh, we'll see if we can find something good. I'm gonna keep looking. Okay, got another one of them super deep signals right here, right after I dug a really shallow uh, 1983 nickel. And since I'm getting coins that are like close to the surface, but yet the old targets I'm getting are like super deep, and there's not a ton of signals here. I'm thinking this this place was metal detected like in the past, and there's a layer of newer stuff as well, and maybe they just some, missed some of the deep stuff. But anyway, about 10 inches down there, I got this old tube. Should be able to figure out what that is because it has writing on it. Actually, it looks like it still has the cap on it. Yeah, it still has the cap on it. So an old tube way down there. I'm gonna keep working it. But I'm pretty sure this place has been metal detected before. Wouldn't surprise me in the location it's in. Awesome place. Okay, about four inches down here up by the road, low the signal, just got me end of a light bulb. And one of the other reasons I think this place was detected is there's a lot of iron chatter, but there's really not much non-ferrous, uh, not many non-ferrous signals mixed in, which could be a sign that it's been uh, picked out. Uh, but I'm still finding stuff, so we're gonna keep at it. On to the next. Okay, so this is super funny. Had a shallow coin signal right here. I was convinced it was gonna be clad. And um, there's so many roots right here. I got under a root and I was prying up and I flung the shovel and I shot dirt all over the corner here. And my signal disappeared. So whatever kind of coin that was, I just launched it. So well, let's see if we can find it real quick. I don't think that's it. That's surface trash. Huh. I'm not sure. I definitely launched that signal, whatever it was. I'll find it though. When I do, I'll let you know, but I think it's a copper penny or clad dime. Hard to see with the sun out here right now, but I found my signal, that's what I launched. Some kind of little cap or something. But anyway, I moved further up away from the tree roots in the middle of the yard where I haven't been yet. And I got a signal that rang up a little bit higher than a nickel. That's a few inches down and I'm right down at it now, so we'll finish it live. See if it's something good. It's in this little clod here. And it's just, oh, oh. I think it's got the wire on it. I think that's an old lead seal. Some of the wire still attached. All right, well that's pretty interesting. I'm gonna clean it up, see if there's anything on it, but it actually doesn't look super thick, so this may not be super old like I was hoping. That might be an old lead seal right there. I'm pretty sure it is lead. All right, well that was pretty neat. Okay, absolute dream signal here. Gotta do this one live. Sounds like a perfect silver quarter signal. I'm right here on the edge of the property by the neighbors, which is also an old house. This is awesome. 
it's just ringing up a tad higher on how the clad quarters ring in. You can see I do a circle around it and no signal. That could be a silver quarter right there. And it's showing some depth too, about three to four inches. All right. We're definitely gonna do this one live. Call it now, is it a silver quarter? And if it is, what kind? Hopefully it's a Standing Liberty quarter. We'll take a Washington. If it is a silver quarter, I sure hope so. All right, nice that there's no roots right here. Not in the plug. Oh, it's a quarter, but it's just clad. Let me clean it up, we'll see the date, see if it's close. Well, we're heading in the right direction. That's the oldest coin so far, 1967 quarter. Hopefully the next one's silver. I like that there's coins down in the soft soil in this end section of the yard. I got a signal that was ringing up the dime slash penny, and I'm already four inches down and it's still in the bottom of the hole, so finish it live. I'm just glad there's targets over here and the dirt seems original, so I'm hopeful. It's right under this tiny little root right here. That should have popped it. Oh, that time it's not a coin. Is that just a bottle top? Yeah, man, did that ring up high. That ring up like a coin, but yeah, we're getting some coins and trash like this at about four inches in this section, so I think we're gonna hit something good. It's coming, just wait. Okay, bouncy mid-tone here, down about six inches. You can see some green crustage on the end of the plug here. This is definitely not a coin, but in case it's something cool, like a relic, we're gonna pull it out here, see what it is. And that is about, is about as least cool as you can get. I think it's just a strip of copper. Next target. Okay, now we're on to something awesome about four inches down. Man, I don't know if I've ever found one complete like this before. I don't usually find stuff like this, so I'm not certain, but is that an old shoe buckle? That is awesome looking there. I'm sorry for the shadows, man. It's hard to get a good angle here in the sun. But yeah, that looks like an old shoe buckle. It's complete too. That is amazing. If anybody knows the estimated age on this, please comment below. I'd love to know. I'm going to clean it up later. I'm going to have to be careful if that doesn't break, but that is a beauty of a buckle right there. That's got to predate this house. That's why I'm looking here. One of the reasons I'm looking here. I know there can be older stuff, and that makes me happy. I'm definitely staying here. Let's keep going. Okay, so I came over in the shade to put this in my pouch so I don't break it, and look at this. It still swivels and everything. That is amazing. Okay, well I'm gonna put this in the pouch, in my bag. We're not gonna carry this around because I don't wanna snap any of that off. Sweet. And just to briefly show you all this buckle cleaned up a little bit, if it helps anyone date it, because I haven't researched it yet. You can see on the top there, it looks like it says HB and C, and it's got like a little zero or an O with like a dot under it or something, I'm not sure. Or maybe there's something after that and sign and it's supposed to be HB and something company. I'm not sure, but HB and C something. So should be able to date that. Cool little buckle though. Just found one of these in one of my last videos. A lead tire weight, that one's broken in half. Both pieces in the same spot there though. Not sure if I broke it, but man, it's lead, so there's no way the shovel should have busted it. I don't think I hit it, so it was probably just already frail. But yep, old lead tire weight, or maybe not so old, who knows. Most of the good stuff I'm finding is right on the edge by the neighbor's property on the opposite side of the house, so I think a lot of the stuff I'm finding isn't even from the house I'm detecting around, but uh, I found this uh, a couple minutes ago, a deep iron ring, horse tack, and uh, right here, got a 70s signal, kind of mid-range. It's a utensil handle of some sort. It's got a real fancy pattern on it. It's definitely an old one there. Moving on. Okay, I know this may seem weird, but I actually think this might be a piece of silver. I don't know what it is, but it kind of tapers off to an end, to a point on that side. And on this side, 
you can see it's solid and if you look at the edges of it it's got a bunch of little marks on it and it's solid the whole way through and it rings up kind of like a low tone because of the shape it's just a really weird shape the detector doesn't want to pick it up real good but like when you hit it the one direction it came up like a like you know almost like a silver quarter but um, I'm gonna have to test this when I get home. I really have no idea what it is. Really strange, but I don't know. You can see where the marks are there. Whatever material this is, it's solid the whole way through and I don't think it's aluminum. It's got some weight to it for sure, for the size of it. So I don't know, that's weird. I'll test it when I get home. Maybe it's silver. If it is, I have no idea what it is. Okay, I got an awesome find right here. I'm working this tiny little strip. It's right here in the front. And um, I got about five inches down. You can tell I'm on the edge of an intersection and it's amazing old trade token. It says good for five and trades, probably a five cent trade token. And I've never seen a design like this before. I think that's gonna be amazing. Looks like it's an original soil in this side. I'm actually thinking the lot that I've been hunting next to the house, there might have been an old house there, I actually think. I'll show some of it here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, first good target I had here on this side, and it's a nice oldie. So I'm gonna comb around here a little bit more. That is a sweet find. It's weird that I haven't even hit a wheat penny yet, but I'd take this over a wheat penny any day. Okay, not sure how well you're gonna hear me. The wind picked up. I think we're onto something special. I'm only about a foot away from where I found that trade token, and I had a deep high conductive signal under this massive root right here. So I spent like three, four minutes digging out under the root to get to it, and I pulled this out. I was expecting it to be silver, Let's see, if, but it's not, and that's not a clad quarter. I don't think it's an old copper coin but it could be another old token. It's like slightly larger than a quarter. I can't see anything on it yet, but when I check the hole with the detector, there's still a faint signal down in there. So I'm gonna keep digging down in under this root and see if there's something else down there with this. Can't wait to find out what that is. But uh, I'm gonna see if I can fish this out and I'll let you know what okay, it is. Okay, we're gonna try to get this out live. This is the other one I just found here. It's a lot deeper than the other one was, or maybe not a lot, maybe a couple inches. I pulled this huge rock out of the hole. And we're almost down on it now. Let's see if we can get it out. Could just be iron down underneath it. No, it's on the side more. That's why it's reading weird. It's on this back edge here. There it is. What is that? Dude, I think it's another one of those trade tokens or something. Oh my goodness, this might be like a trade token spill. Unbelievable. This is crazy. There might be more in there. Well, I'm gonna fish around here a little bit and if there's more, I'll turn the camera back on. Dude, I am totally tripping right now. This is one amazing spill. That small one I cleaned up turned out to be a wheat penny. And this right here, you can't really see it as it's drying off. Um, I'll have to spit on it, but uh, I don't know. Did I accidentally flip it over? On one of these sides here, it's got a bust facing right on it. 
It's definitely not an American coin if it is a coin. I'm not sure if it's a coin or a foreign, or I'm not sure if it's a token, an American token or a foreign coin yet, but it's bigger than a quarter and it's got a bust on it facing right. Got the wheat penny and that five cent trade token. This is gonna be the find of a while. That is, that is just nuts. And there may be more down there. I'm gonna go comb it real good with the detector, but one amazing spill right there. All right, I'll get them cleaned up later. Let's uh, let's go grid that patch off and see if there's more down there. Okay, with it drying off now, you can see the bust facing right on there. I'm pretty sure I actually know what this is. It looks like some of the old coins from Belgium. Um, if it is, it looks like an earlier design one. These coins and tokens could all be from like uh, the early 1900s, early 1900s. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's a coin from Belgium right there got the wheat penny and the trade token amazing maybe there's some silver down there too we're gonna go look right about okay now. we're right back at it this hole right here and behind this plug you can't really see it it's underneath this plug here is where I pulled those other ones and I still had a faint 70 signal and thankfully the root isn't down in this section you can see this plugs about five inches it's pretty deep I got down to it it looks like it's another one for the spill I don't know if this is a spill or a little hoard, but this is bigger than a wheat penny. Oh, it's a buffalo nickel. Oh my gosh. This is just phenomenal. That rang up pretty high for a buffalo, but maybe because it was deep or maybe there's more down there. Let's set that there and check it again. Oh my stars. That's definitely another non-ferrous. Oh, I'm not sure if it's non-ferrous, but it's ringing it's all with the pinpointer in the same general area. Could be something else down there with it. Right down on top of it now. Okay, let's see what it is. It is just a nail down there with it. That's probably what spiked the signal. Let's stick that there in the plug. Check this again. All right, well, in that hole, right next to that spill, we got a, a nail and a buffalo nickel. I'm gonna check this area real good again. I'm gonna crank my sensitivity way up and work it slow and see if there's more down here. This is amazing. What did I tell you guys this was gonna be an old spill? This is in great condition. It's gonna have a lot of detail. Look at that. You can see it under there even with all that dirt. I think it's a 1915 buffalo. Heck, that could even be a 13. That would even be better yet. If this has a mint mark on it, it's actually gonna be quite rare. It doesn't have the raised mound. Or maybe it does. Actually, I can't tell on there. Maybe that is. I'm not sure, but it's like 1913 or 1915. So I think those other coins are gonna and tokens are gonna date right around that range. These have been down there for probably at least a hundred years. I'll, I'll see what the date is on that. Um, what I think is a coin from Belgium and that weedy. They're probably from around that same era. Well, let's go get some more. This is amazing. So here's one last look at the coins before I show them cleaned up. The ones that came from that spill. You can now see that the buffalo is definitely 1915, and to have that much detail on a buffalo nickel that old, I would assume these coins were not dropped too long after 1915. So I'll clean up that weedy, see the date on that, and I'm pretty much positive that's either a coin from France or Belgium, and we got the trade token. Alrighty, you're about ready to see them cleaned up. Get ready. Okay guys, so before I get back to the digs in this video, I gotta show these coins cleaned up. This is one of my favorite finds in a long time. I, I don't even know what to compare it to because to me this is like what I'm looking for. This is extremely historic. This is potentially what somebody had in their pocket that they lost about a hundred years ago, so it's awesome to me, especially because of the variety. It shows me what the locals in that area a hundred years ago might have had on them but uh, check it out, some really cool stuff here. So these are the uh, four items that were in the spill. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and start with the Wheat Penny, which is right here. It is a 1918. I didn't clean these up the whole way yet, but you can see there's a lot of detail under there. So that was fairly uh, minty fresh when it was dropped. So if these coins were dropped in 1918, it's exactly 100 years ago. But who knows, maybe they were dropped in 1919 or shortly thereafter. The Buffalo Nickel is a 1915. You can see the date on there really well. Some of the dirt makes it look like a 3, but it's definitely a 5. This is in remarkable condition, so this wasn't passed around a lot, even though it was uh, out and about for at least three years. Beautiful 1915 early date. It's got the full horn. Just a phenomenal buffalo nickel. So we got 1918, 1915. I'm going to go to this coin next. Now I'm going to have to insert a still photo of what this would have looked like in better condition because you're not going to be able to see much on it. But I was correct. It is from France. It is a 10 Son teams from 1916. So that is an amazing coin that somebody had in their pocket. And um, the last but not least, the trade token, which is amazing. I'm going to show you guys something here too. I love how this was preserved. The I'm not sure exactly the alloy it's made out of, but it held up really well. And um, the cool thing about this token is it's actually got a really big die crack in it too. So if it's rare, this will even make it more rare. But you can see right here, wrapped around there and down the R, huge die crack. So uh, that's really cool. And check it out on the other side. Now this is not where I was hunting today, but I was maybe... I don't know, maybe uh, 30 to 40 minutes away from this uh, city or town of Marion, Virginia, D.M. Smith Drug Company. Beautiful trade token, real thick one too. Just turned up in fantastic condition and I'm not done cleaning it yet. So that was the contents, what I assume that was the contents of somebody's pocket in around 1918, and I couldn't be happier with this find. I love finding stuff like this. This is why Metal Detect, right there. As late as 1917, the United States maintained only a small army, one which was in fact smaller than 13 of the nations and empires already active in the war. After the passage of the Selective Service Act in 1917, it drafted 4 million men into military service. By the summer of 1918, about 2 million U.S. soldiers had arrived in France, about half of whom eventually saw frontline service. By the armistice of November 11th, approximately 10,000 fresh soldiers were arriving in France daily. Okay, I could be wrong, but I just had a really faint signal in the mid-tone range uh, by this tree here where a lot of the soil's mounted up and the targets are super deep here. I had that amazing spill right over here, but I was chasing everything here because I just had to know if some of these things were old. So I've literally been chopping away at this signal for like six, seven minutes because there's so many roots down there. And I'm down about eight inches and I did a flick with the shovel and I could swear I saw a silver coin about quarter sized kind of flick out and fall back down in. So I'm gonna go down in after it and see if that's what it was. If that is what I saw, it should be in my hand now, because it should be in the loose dirt. Hopefully, that rock is not what I saw there. It could be, because that is fairly white looking. If it is, that's gonna be the biggest tease ever. Whatever the signal is, it's still down there. I don't think it's loose. I think that is what jumped out at me, and I thought that was silver. Okay, we'll keep working okay, at this. It's super windy right now. I'm working this iron-infested little street corner on the opposite side of the driveway where, where I found that amazing spill. So I'm right here. You can see that's the intersection right there in the stop sign. And um, I got a signal that was ringing 86, 87, like a silver dime. And I popped this plug, and it is iron-infested over here. There's almost no good signals mixed in, but I have one nice high tone. 
cleaning up in the plug, so we'll see if it's something good. I'm not sure. Hope that little piece isn't it. Nope. Oh, it's a coin. It's not silver. And it's not even a weedy. Maybe this is, who knows? If this is filled dirt or what over here. Wow, that deep, like four inches. It's not even old, 1981. I got a memorial by that other spill earlier that uh, was hit by the lawnmower. Looks like a taco. But uh, okay, at least the coin. So I forgot to mention that deep signal I was chasing where that white rock gave me a flash and I thought it was a silver coin. Well, it was like a 10 inch deep little piece of copper. Uh, just, you never know how deep. It was modern copper too. There wasn't much patina on it. You can never tell around the bases of those trees how deep the targets are going to be. Normally the old, old stuff is like way, way down. But anyway, figured I'd show that. And over by the street corner, I'm just showing it here because it's not as noisy. Um, I found this about two inches down. An old school, early digital Timex watch. That was a pretty neat find. Even though those are junk, I still like finding those. And then right here up against this, this massive root, where did I set it now? Did I put it? No, here it is, right here. Just found a little, I think it's a cap off of one of those old aluminum tubes. It's got a P on the top of it, so it's threaded on the inside. Definitely the lid to one of those old, old style aluminum tubes. All right, we'll keep looking. Having a good hunt? So here's a look at the property I'm hunting today. Mostly this big open side lot. And from the way this looks right here, I think there may have been an old house torn out of this here, which would explain why there's no signals right in here. It's all fill dirt. Working this edge is where I found some of the coins from the 70s. This over here beside me is used as apartments right now. It's a big old house that's split up into multiple units. And right on this edge, um, I am actually surprisingly in the middle of nowhere back here on this lot finding um, some a bunch of pennies and stuff like that from the 70s. Um, but I think it's mostly fill dirt back here where I think an old house used to sit. Um, but we'll keep working it. I mean, as long as there's targets back here, I'm going to keep rooting around. I didn't realize the property went back this far, so uh, bonus footage. When I first got permission at this house, I had no idea how big the lot was. I was just walking down the front of the street and saw this uh, kind of big strip in between and thought it'd be a perfect place to detect. I didn't care how old the house was considering the area I'm in. Look at all this back here. I can't see through the viewfinder, so I'm sorry if you can't see much, but this property's massive. I mean, for the area that I'm in, I'm surprised it hasn't been developed over. I mean, it's at least, at least two and a half acres, maybe. Uh, but anyway, you can't see from behind this bush. The big brick house there, the lot I just showed where I think an old house might have been tore out. So I've been working this edge here. Like I said, I've been popping like pennies from the 70s, which I think are from this house, not from this one, or potentially maybe this house was tore out in the 70s or 80s. I have no idea. Um, but it's like, it's a dead zone for signals in the middle here. <laughs> Except I found the lead fishing sinker. Somebody was probably practicing in the yard here. So I think there was an old house tore out here. So I'm working this edge. Who knows if it was from this tore out house or this one over here. But I keep finding coins on this edge. And right in this hole, down in the pine straw here. Thankfully there's no crazy roots back in this section. 1961, so heck, there could be silver in this little young tree line here in between these properties. So, I mean, I'm surprised there's coins over here. I could pretty much guarantee it's not from this brick house that I'm hunting. So, either the tore out one or this one, but there's stuff down in here. That's why you check everywhere in your permissions, especially when they're super old. So, uh, 1961, now let's get us a little bit older. So I do think there was a house back here and all this fill dirt um, and other than the iron chirping, all they've been able to pick out other than a few pieces of scrap like brass and copper is a little tiny piece of a uh, harmonica reed and a really mangled up rose tag. So uh, I'll keep working and see if there's anything mixed around in this area here. But I'm, I'm almost certain now there was a house in this lot here. Okay, so the digs from this point on in the video are from the same day, but it's from a different permission. On my way back home, I decided I was gonna stop and hunt a place that me and Jerry had hunted before. They had cut the grass down a little bit more, so I figured I'd give it another shot. Now, this is the place where Jerry had dug like, um, I think eight Indian head pennies when I hunted it with him. We, I found some silver coins. I found like three war nickels when I was there, a silver Roosevelt dime. We found all kinds of lead seals from the railroad, just tons of relics and other coins. It was an amazing spot. 
Jerry went back to this place and hunted it solo. It was a few weeks ago, and he found a mercury dime, like two war nickels, I think another Indian head penny, and I went back, which is the digs you're about to see, and I found a lot more. So I hope you enjoyed this little bonus on the end of the video. I was really feeling it today, and I put in a lot of digging, so stay tuned and see what I found. I broke a record on something, so here it goes. Okay, after digging one tiny phantom target, I got a signal in the 70s way down there about seven inches looks like we got a penny down in the hole so hopefully this one's an indian we're gonna find out here in a second it is indeed indian head penny you can see the wreath on the back there and it's a little crusty in the front i can't see the date but i will clean it up later Gotta keep moving, don't have too long before dark, so gonna keep the filming quick and moving. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what this is, but I found it down about seven inches under this big piece of concrete. Almost looks like it's got a pattern on it. I don't know if that's part of the old sidewalk or what, but that was down in here and I still had a signal. It was down underneath that. I think this portion of the yard has been shifted around. They added some fill dirt toward the bottom. Uh, it's about a yard and a half up from me where I found the Indian, where we found all our other good coins in the past, the old ones, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that was crazy. Close that hole back up and we'll keep looking. Okay, so chasing them deep signals, it's been a few minutes. I've just been digging some nails and really faint uh, junk targets. Got a high 70 signal, very deep. I got down here, now that I'm this far down, I was thinking it might be a coin. I don't know if that's a silver edge right here by my finger or if this is gonna be one of them lead railroad seals. Ooh, what is this? Yeah, it's one of the old uh, railroad uh, boxcar seals, looks like. Yeah, still got a lot of the wire attached to it. These ring up just like the Indian heads here. I've had these deep there before, but I love finding these. That's the story of this front yard. I mean, we found some silver coins in here, but, uh. They're like the newer ones, like the mercury dimes and stuff. The only old coins we found in here were like Indian heads. Pretty neat. Hey, Katie. You help me sniff out the silver? Huh? You help me sniff out the silver? <laughs> All right, let's go. Chasing them faint peeps down about six and a half inches here. Got an old piece of lead. That's definitely an old piece, very oxidized. Probably about as old as that Indian head penny. Thought for a second it was going to be a Civil War bullet, but not quite the right shape. All right, moving on. Getting close to the bottom of the yard where the fill dirt is, a signal we obviously missed before, but uh, nothing good. It wasn't too deep. 1970 penny. All right, I want to try to find some more deep Indians. Got to be more down here. So I think we have like, uh, with the one I just found, I think that's 10 Indians out of this permission over the times we've been here. So uh, maybe another okay, one. Okay, I think maybe I have another one of them lead seals or maybe an Indian. Saw this in the bottom of the hole. It looks like an imprint. Doesn't quite look like a coin imprint. Might be some rust on there from like the lead seal from the wire on it. And I can see it right down there with my finger. I'll just plop it out. Looks like another one of the boxcar or baggage seals. Sweet. These are gonna look really good cleaned up. It's funny how many times you can go over this section of the yard and just when you hit it a little bit of a different direction, it just hits. But we've been over this part probably 30, 35, 40, maybe even 50 passes a piece. And they still keep coming out of there. Yeah, that's one of the one that says Marion on it. Pretty cool. I got a signal that would only lock on for one direction and I gotta go quick because my battery's dying here. Saw it in the bottom of the hole. It's not silver, but it's another oldie. Ooh, could this be another Indian? It is. Ring up 86 one direction and the other way it disappeared like iron. There must be some trash in the hole with it. But sweet, this is the farthest one over toward the driveway that we found on the Indians. They've all been closer to the center of the yard. Sweet. Number two, this permission's been awesome on the Indian head pennies. Let's try to sneak out another one. Okay, I'm under this pine tree. 
I found a few things under here before, but it was grown in a lot worse last time I was here. So I came back down underneath it and had a solid 70 signal. They got some sort of pin that may be military. I don't think it's silver. Oh, it might be. That might be sterling. That's pretty cool though. I'm glad I didn't hit it with the shovel. That definitely would have snapped. Okay, I'm walking down to another hole here. Just went to the car to shed the pouch, get rid of some baggage, because I'm getting tired and it's getting cold out. Put on my jacket and I had to get another battery for the camera and this one's about to die too. Another deep one here, I'm not gonna waste any time. Hopefully this is another Indian. Oh man, that's a really green one. Faint signal down about seven inches. Dude, that's a beauty. You can see it right on there, 1887. Sweet. Nice jade green patina. I'm gonna swing around a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm gonna show some of the better finds cleaned up here and really happy with some of the results. You're gonna see in a second uh, a new oldest something for me. But anyway, first wanted to show these um, lead railroad boxcar or baggage seals. Now, the more iron they have on them, that's left, the worse the signal is. So normally when you're first hunting a property, you'll find all the ones that don't have any of the wire attached. But um, now that I'm down to digging pretty much everything, even some of the iron at that location, I'm starting to find um, all the bits like this. But man, these are in such awesome condition. I like finding these. And take a look at that. Uh, same as the uh, trade token from earlier in the day. They're from Marion. And um, I haven't researched that railroad yet, but um, I believe it's a V and T railroad. I can't remember exactly what that stands for, but I think Virginia and something. It must be the Virginia and Tennessee railroad. Um, off the top of my head, that would make the most sense, but uh, don't quote me on that. But I got two of those lead seals. Man must have found uh, at least seven or eight of those uh, from that yard in the past. Now. I, the camera died toward the end and it was getting dark, so I just stopped filming. I did find this old uh, little buckle. It's got a little bit of a pattern on it. You can kind of see there. But I found that in the backyard. And um, this here I didn't show on camera. I did find a buffalo nickel. It is extremely toasty. And unfortunately on this one, because you can see right down there about where my fingernail is, I'm pretty sure this has an S mint mark on it down there. So uh, if it still had the date visible, it was, this would probably be a semi-key date, but it doesn't look like we're ever going to know. Uh, it's really corroded too, so I don't think, uh, I think if I tried naked date on this, I don't think I'd get very good results. I think it's too far gone. But if I tried, I'll let you guys know. Now, the three little Indians, awesome. So <laughs> you probably saw that already, but anyway, all from the 1800s. We got an 1893 right there. Just kind of did a little bit of cleaning on. I'm going to do a little bit more. This one turned out to be an absolute beauty. 1887. Really like that one. Detail really pops on it. 1887 Indian head and a new record for me. Last year during my dig or die series when I found a gold ring, I found an 1873 Indian head next to an old farm field. And that was my oldest one. And it's about a year later and here you go. 1864. Now, in 1864, they had a bronze variety, and it's when they phased out a copper nickel. This is the bronze variety. You can see the rim is the same as the other Indian heads. Um, but yeah, 1864, my new oldest Indian head penny. And I thought for a minute when I was cleaning it up, it was going to be um, an 1864 L, which is really rare. But the one way you can tell, even if the L is worn off, is the bust right here is pointed at the end. I think this one is rounded. I have to, it's been a while since I've looked for these varieties, but I'm pretty sure this is just a standard 1864 bronze variety, but I will double check it. So what happened in 1864 is they started adding an L to the um, uh, the back of the ribbon on the Indian head for the uh, last name of the person who designed the coin, which is Long Acre. So, um, those are pretty rare, even with the L worn off, if they're in decent shape. I mean, they'll sell for like 30, 40 bucks, even if they're fairly worn coins. Um, so anyway, super happy to have that. 
So maybe next time we can knock a fatty Indian off the list. That would be amazing. Uh, but this is as close as you can get to uh, finding an Indian head without finding a fatty because they, they ran from 1859 to 1864. So uh, this would have been the second part of the year. And that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I just had an awesome time making today's video. A lot of driving, a lot of digging, a lot of swinging, but I had a lot of fun. So thanks for watching. Take care, everyone, and happy treasure hunting.